Hello, friends, and welcome back to another modern horror movie talk. And today we're talking about the Children of the Corn remake, talking about the potential for Mike Flanagan's Nightmare on Elm Street, and we're going to watch the trailer for The Blackening. All that and more in today's episode. It's insane, right? Welcome back to the channel, and yes, we've got another one. Thank you so much for your wonderful feedback on the last episode. It was so awesome to interact with you guys in the comments. And today, we've got a guest, Mike Conway from Joe Blow Horror Originals and various other things. Mike, tell the people what you do. Let's see, I do various editing and writing on uh, certain episodes on the Joe Blow Horror Movie channel, and I also um, manage the Joe Blow Horror Movies, the Joe Blow Top Trailers channel, and the Joe Blow Streaming and TV Trailers. And I also have my own show, the Horror Party Movies. See? So you're a jack of all trades on the channel. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting your name. We're getting your face out there a little more, too. So I'm really excited to talk about the movie today. But before we even get into it, we are going to steal John and Lance. <laughs> it's not going to look quite the same, but I mean, when I do this show by myself, I obviously can't be drinking. So I'm going to take advantage of it when I have a guest on. So, oh, yeah, Mike, what you drinking? All right. So I. Took it upon myself to get a tall can of uh, Voodoo Ranger. This is from New Belgium, and it is 9%. Yes. <laughs> Voodoo Ranger is one of my favorites. Actually, I think I have drank that on the Arrow on the Head show. Oh, <laughs> nice. It is fantastic. <laughs> and is. I got, let's see, I got to look at the thing. Ashwood Hard Root Beer. I don't, I don't know. My, my stomach's been having some issues lately, so beer is <laughs> not... Uh, <laughs> Not working. Not quite to John's extent where I'm needing gin and tonics all the time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, was, I was debating between uh, this or hard liquor and I was like, I hadn't had a beer in maybe a couple of weeks. So let's let's do it. There you go. Well, <laughs> cheers, man. Cheers, buddy. Toast to our last summer of immature adolescent decadence. Children of the Corn describes the events leading up to and including the massacre of the adults of a small town in Nebraska by their children after the adult's irresponsibility ruins the crop and the children's future. Children of the Corn 2023. Or is it 2020? I don't, it's, it's really hard to, uh, <laughs> even when you're looking up stuff for this movie, it's like, wait, do I look up 2020? Do I look up Children of the Corn remake? Do I look up 2023? Because even when you look up the remake, sometimes it brings up the other Children of the Corn remakes. Was that so one from 2009? Just, yes, 2009. Yeah. So <laughs> it just makes it all the more confusing and so this one i'll for those that are unaware i'll go over the background of it a little bit because this was filmed in australia in 2019 and then was supposed to release in i believe october of 2020 and it released into two theaters in florida and then was pulled and didn't hear anything about it. There were, I think, two different release dates. At least one other release date was October 2022. That came and went. And then suddenly they're dropping it now in March where it will release. I believe it came out this past Friday theatrically, and then it will be on digital and on demand later this month. I think Shudder is also one of the people that have picked it up. So yeah, Shudder got it. If you, so if you have a Shudder subscription, you should be able to watch this soon. And so, Mike, I I made sure to tell you not to say anything to me about what you thought before. Uh -huh. And I'll uh, I'll first I'll first go over my opinion of it because I think yours is the opposite. So, uh, first of all, I do not have any any background with Children of the Corn, none whatsoever. In that, I've seen the original. I think it's very mediocre, and I've seen many of the other sequels because AMC used to play them all the time on TV. So I've seen bits and pieces, but like I've never been big into the Children of the Corn series. So this movie came along and I feel like it's very slickly shot. And for a movie like this, one of the most important things for me is the lead. Like the final girl is extremely important to me. And I absolutely loved the final girl in this. Bo, her real name is Elena Camporis. And I think she is just phenomenal in this. I really enjoyed as, both her as an actress, but then her character too. Her character does this thing where there's the whole th 
uh, thing is set up with a small Nebraska town that then they are it's essentially crumbling. And so the, the kids that are there, they're stuck there. Bo is able to get out. She's like getting it has uh, is going to college. So that alone already. I like that because then it's like, OK, we're we have Bo established as like one of the townspeople, but she's an outsider because of the fact that she's leaving. That alone is I loved that little detail so, so much. So then when shit starts hitting the fan, it just it makes sense as to why they would trust Bo in certain circumstances. But then they're also like, well, no, you're you're going to leave us anyway. So we don't care. I don't want it to just be me. So, Mike, I, I know I didn't talk about everything I want to talk about, but. No, we, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So um, just like you, I have no skin in the game with Children of the Corn. I mean, I saw the original. I didn't care for it. I actually think I liked part two and three a lot more because I used to watch those a lot back in HBO Cinemax days in the 90s. Are they trashy fun? Oh, yeah. They, the sequels are. The sequels are trashy fun. With this one, I was really interested because I dug the trailer. And r- right when I put it on, the first thing I noticed was this thing was beautifully shot. Like, gorgeous. After the first uh, scene, the first thing I thought of was, oh, I'm in for a treat, man. Uh, So I'm going to go ahead and get this out there. I had an absolute blast with the movie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you tricked me. No. Well, I'm not going to. Okay. I uh, I had a blast (laughs) for it for different reasons. (laughs) Yeah. You thought in the so bad way. I get it. Yeah. This was a corny. No pun intended. This was a very corny movie. (laughs) Smithies, are they booing me? Uh, no, they're saying boo urns, boo urns. If it wasn't so greatly shot in the way that some of the characters were talking, mainly the adults, <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, was, I would absolutely hate this movie. And at the end of the movie, I just, I stood up and started clapping. I, I, I had a, <laughs> I had an absolute blast. I, like it's so enjoyable. <laughs> it's so enjoyable. Like I, it's definitely better than all the other ones I've ever seen. See, that's that's what I like to hear. And yeah. I, I agree, too, that like I think that everyone that's not Bo and Eden, Eden is the main. She's like the Isaac of this movie. Anything outside of them, I'm really not a big fan of in terms of their acting. I really like Delena for just how grounded she is. And I just think she's a good actress. Yeah. Kate, on the other hand, I like her because of she's not trying to play an evil girl. She's not. I feel like kids in these movies always go like very large and mm-hmm. like like Isaac in the first movie is so cringe worthy in terms of like he's like a kid trying to be evil. And I liked that this I think that the creepiest moments are when this girl is just saying something in a very innocent way. And I should also state, I don't think there's a moment in this film that's scary. <laughs> like, no. don't think there's a moment. There's not a moment that's scary, and there's not a kill that's like, oh my god. Other well, than there's there's the one reporter, ki- reporter gets yeah. ripped in half. That's pretty sweet. That one. There's one kill in the movie where I was like, oh shit! I, I didn't see that coming because <laughs> I thought he was going to be like a a main character in the movie, like kind of following. Or mm-hmm. final girl, but uh, no, that's that the kill came out of nowhere for me. Uh, but yeah, I agree. The uh, um, Eden, I thought she did great. That yeah, some of the other, and I think you're. Oh, what is that kid's name? I know who you're talking about because mm. as soon as he shows up, it's like, ooh, this guy, this guy has some rough li- line readings. <laughs> but I don't like to. I also don't like to because I know that this was filmed in Australia. So Mm -hmm. part of me is like, okay, how much of this is like bad acting and how much is them just trying to struggle through an American accent? Well, the, the leads, I thought they did great. I did. I had no idea this filmed in Australia until very recently. Like after I watched the movie, I don't think Elena is, is Australian. And yeah, I don't think Kate is Kate sounded like an American. Mm -hmm, So I think, but in, but in terms of like side characters, I think that they're, they, got australians and i think that's part of why some of the acting isn't great but i think that it's just it's just some bad acting at points like it's just it's so funny that the uh the best acting came from the kids <laughs> compared yeah, to that well, never <laughs> happens <laughs> the the scene that really made me uh really get into the movie and i just start i couldn't quit laughing I, and i feel bad because i don't like to laugh at people who are really trying but the uh the town hall meeting yes. scene where the this is 
I think it was the abusive father. He yes. was just going really over the top. And it reminded me of the South Park episode of the town meeting where they're like, they took our jobs. <laughs> well, they took our jobs. They took your jobs. They took your jobs. <laughs> Oh, that's the thing. I like that scene in particular. It was starting to go into like, a, ooh, I don't I don't know about this. Yeah. And then because it was mostly because I didn't like Eden standing up and being like, this is what about the kids? We have a vote. And so I liked the dad, like kind of putting putting her in her place and being like, no, you don't get a vote. You're a child. Like mm -hmm. we we deal with the decisions here. Yeah, <laughs> that aspect I quite enjoyed mm -hmm. where I, I absolutely understand like the badness of this. Like they also add in really random CGI that it doesn't work like the uh, I, I I'm not even I won't specify so this doesn't get into spoilers. One yeah, of the yeah. adults is like hung up on a corn stalk thing that then when it pulls away, it does this super weird CGI corn like attacks mm -hmm. his face thing. And yeah. it was so unnecessary, but it was so entertaining. <laughs> it's like not that stupid moment doesn't ruin the other parts of the movie. Just like there is a really weird tag on the end of the film that it just like I enjoyed that I enjoyed the tag. That's the thing that made me stand up and start cheering because like, I was like, they really went for it <laughs> right there. Yes. So, uh, I was like, again, uh, we're not spoiling it, but it's just a cool tag. Like there's interesting moments mm -hmm. where I watch. I have to watch a lot of uh, horror movies for the site. I'm one of our critics. And so I just I see a lot of movies that, you know, I'm checking my watch and just waiting for it to be over yet i've seen this movie twice i have really enjoyed it i i i was really concerned because i watched it the one time absolutely loved it and then started seeing people's reactions to it and how much they hated it and i was just like do i need to do i need to watch this again to make sure i didn't see the wrong movie and i watched it last night and enjoyed the shit out of it i can i can see the flaws but like they're not bad enough to make me dislike the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you came here thinking I was going to hate it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I to be fair, I'm I'm real on edge about this right now. I uh, <laughs> I, I I really expected to I I don't know I expected there to be a more vocal minority in terms of people that really enjoyed it. I didn't expect the level of hatred that yeah. is being thrown at this movie, especially from there's just. So much hatred from people that haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> so well, like, the, the, the first thing I did after I saw it, I texted one of my friends because he got a free ticket to go see it in theaters. He's, he, he told me he's going to skip it because it looked terrible. And I immediately texted him back. I was like, you need to see this in a theater with some people, man. This thing is you're going to have an absolute blast with this movie. I keep saying blast, but it, that's exactly what I had. It's so much fun. I can't wait to own this on Blu-ray because... I love movies that you can just like put in and like they're it, they're just on and you enjoy. There's nothing you don't really have to think hard about it. It's just fun stuff. Because again, for me, a horror movie, if the lead is intriguing and good like that, that's all. That's what I need. I need mm -hmm. that. That's a major factor for me. And so. I don't know. I, I love this lead. So I also I should I should state too. I actually got to interview these people. I have interviewed uh, Kurt Wimmer, the director and Elena Camporis and Kate Moyer just to put it out there. I had my review finished and was published before I interviewed them. So it was not influenced by them at all. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed getting to, you know, talk to them about this because I think that it sucks when a film that you enjoy then doesn't get the even the dumb kind of praise that I would like for it to get. I would I just it's very disappointing when I see uh yeah, Barbarian. That's a well, there's a you, from your view, I'm pointing at Barbarian, but from my view, I'm pointing oh. at Halloween ends. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh. No. <laughs> Bad Mike. Bad uh, Mike. Someone's gotta love it, man. Someone's gotta love it. For those of you unaware, Mike is a fan of Halloween ends. Very we, much. Uh, we might have to have a conversation <laughs> on the show about that at some point, but that'll have to be that'll have to be way in the future when uh I can stand to talk about Halloween ends again. <laughs> So when it comes to the I want to know what you thought of the monster, the man, what do they call him? The man who walks, the man behind the rose. They call him something. 
he who walks. Again, not a children of the corn guy. So it's like I went into this with zero expectations. And so my thought was when I saw the creature, even though you can see it in the trailer, the trailer shows mm. the creature. I had no idea. Is that like a thing in the movies? Do they have a physical manifesta manifestation of the corn? I, I, I don't know. That's the first thing I asked myself. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I looked up every single movie to see if there's an actual monster in any of the movies and I didn't see one. I mean, maybe I could be mistaken, but I, I wasn't going to bother to watch 11 of these movies uh, just to prepare for, <laughs> prepare for this. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, me neither. I know that the I know that the creature looks very similar to. Did you ever see Netflix's In the Tall Grass? I haven't. I haven't. That's one I've been meaning to say. There, there's a creature that looks similar to it. So okay. it's like I I didn't mind. I didn't I didn't hate the creature. The main thing with it was that it didn't have any weight to it. Like you could very much tell that it wasn't actually interacting with anything. Mm -hmm. So when the, when it's not filling a space, it's hard to really have any kind of, I don't know, threat when it comes to a CGI monster. Like there I, needs yeah. to be some kind of. I don't think it needed to be needed. Yeah, it, it could have been yeah. easily left out and still been a solid movie to me. Yeah, but I think that also it helps it um, go further into the cheese category mm -hmm. and that it for further makes it entertaining. Because, like, again, I think that if these elements weren't in it, I may not have enjoyed it as much. If the adults maybe were competent actors and, like, maybe there were some, like, really awesome kills throughout. Mm hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'd be lesser of it because I would have had less fun with the entirety of the film because my thing was how many times there are so many moments in this film that you could just like stop it. And it's just a beautiful screenshot. Just yeah, exactly like um, I, I don't know how you feel about the movie, but the first thing that uh, came to my head, right? The opening shot of the corn, it reminded me of the 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 new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, like some of those some of that movie is so gorgeous to look at, especially with him like popping out in the little sunflower sunflowers, I think. Yeah. 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 Actually, that's a good that's a really good comparison. The new Texas Chainsaw. I wasn't a massive fan. I was able to see how some people could have enjoyment of it. Mm -hmm. But my biggest issue was my preconceived notions. Yeah. So I have an idea of what Leatherface is and the Leatherface they presented us was more Jason. So then that wasn't for me. People can be watching this video and be like, well, you don't know exactly anything you're talking about horror movies because I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre twice that day and I've probably seen it two more times since then. I, I, I have such a good time with that movie. So, oh, uh, so do you, do you, and you, you're a fan of that I, film? Yeah, I am. I am. I, I'm a I fan of a lot I've, of things, man. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, there's some things I hate. A, that's the way to be, though. I, I made sure and I always want to get this across to any of our viewers is that if I dislike a movie, if one of our guests dislikes a movie, if we like a movie, it does not change your opinion of it. You can like what you like. We can like what we like. It's still that's the great part about horror in particular is that there's all these very many different niches within it. And so I feel like we're getting away from the just respecting other people's, I don't know, opinions about horror because like. You and I differ greatly on Halloween ends. Oh, yeah. I respect your opinion. On it. <laughs> I think uh, the entire world disagrees with my opinion on Halloween ends, <laughs> except for maybe a couple of people. And that's the kind of thing, too. So I understand even with so back to Children of the Corn, I understand I'm going to be a minority on this. Mm -hmm. I've it's been the case before that doesn't really change my enjoyment of it because I still am going to be watching it again. I'm still going to be enjoying it again. It's not going to. And if it does, if I watch this in five years and it suddenly like doesn't click, then guess what? That means I've changed as an individual and I like that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we've uh, covered, we've really covered children of the corn as mm -hmm. well as we can. So what would you rate this film out of 10? All right. As far as it being okay, I'm gonna rate this two two ways. As far as it being an actual movie, like a like a good movie, I would probably say five. Now, out of enjoyment, and would I watch this movie again? Yes, I would. I would give it a straight out eight. So, my final statement, I would give it an eight. Awesome. My my review is actually on JoBlo.com right now. I gave it an eight. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I did not. I, I didn't see your review yet. So that's well, that's, that's right where I'm at in terms of the content. There's a lot and even the stuff that gets brought down. Likely, I would have been at a seven. But this movie has sat with me. I got to watch this in the beginning of February, end of January. I don't know. It's been a decent amount of time. And so it's sat with me all this time. And the fact that I think about it so much and enjoyed so much of it and and on the second viewing, that's what made it go up to an eight for me, because I also view it as like, I want to help this film out. Like, I enjoyed this movie. I want it. I want it to do well. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's going to. And I don't know if uh, anyone watching it's available in theaters now. Let me know what you think. If you like the so bad, it's good genre. If you think if you watch that trailer and you see that blonde Elena Camporis and you're like, oh, my God, she's gorgeous. Well, you might enjoy the movie because she's the lead. So I know that that's one thing that I absolutely loved about it. You can watch my interview. I'll show a clip of it here. You can see how much I'm in love with her. You know what, Tyler? This is a, I'm going to flip the script because I'm a horror junkie. All right. I love horror. And we've been asked this question literally every interview. Oh, no. Have you? <laughs> no, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to ask you. I want an answer from you, Tyler, because you're the horror expert as well. We got Children of the Corn out of the way. One thing we got to get into movie news. And so. When I have a guest on, I want to try and make it so there's a little less of this stuff because obviously the movie news is, you know, can expand a little more when it's just me solo. But there was one thing that was announced this week announced. It's not really even an announcement. It's just revealed this week that Mike Flanagan is interested in doing a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Oh, I mean. I don't know about you, but Mike Flanagan is my guy and I yeah. am whew, the, the idea because there's I did not watch all of what is it called? The Midnight Club. Yeah, but I there is there's so many instances in that first episode with it like the camera work. He's meant for an Elm Street. He understands the, like because a big a big aspect of the Elm Street series, I think, is always the camera work. And mm -hmm. I think he would fucking nail the camera work so, so well. What do you think? So right when I saw this, I immediately went on the Twitter and the Facebook and said, hey, Mike Conway also has an idea for a, a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And he just doesn't know who, at, who to pitch it to. But no one's going to no one's going to pick me. <laughs> Someone's obviously <laughs> going to pick someone like Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan is awesome. I had very low expectations for Dr. Sleep because I didn't care for the book, but somehow he pulled some sort of magic trick and made that movie incredible. And so if he can do pretty much everything I've seen by Mike Flanagan has been awesome. So I, yeah. if he wants to do an Elm Street movie instead of me, by all means, he, <laughs> he should be the guy to do it. He should be the other Mike to do it. Uh, by the way, Mike, we're going to have to talk off uh, off uh, camera after this because I also have an Elm Street pitch that I think is fucking awesome that I will yeah. not share. No, I'm not sharing online because it's so good that I'm I don't want anyone stealing it. Well, I'm very interested in your pitch because I've been thinking of this pitch for three years and I even started writing it and I was like, I'm probably wasting my time actually writing this thing. So I kind of just stopped. It. I've had mine for I've had mine for 15 years and 15, I have ooh. the first like first act written. Oh, dude, you got to send it to me. Please send it to me. <laughs> it seems like we're both very much on board for this. And I guess I'm not super shocked because Elm Street's awesome. And I would love to see them. Yeah. I mean, my first um, my first horror movie ever in the theaters, I was four years old. And I don't know if I've mentioned this to, to you before, but my dad took me to go see Nightmare on Elm Street 4 in the theaters just before I turned five. And uh, so this was 1988. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> and uh, I remember we watched the entire thing up until the point where Freddy reveals himself as the nurse. And uh, I started screaming. That's a third. And, uh, no, 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 no. It's part four. What, uh, oh, whenever, that nurse. That yeah, nurse. That I nurse. Thought, not I thought the, talking about the, not the, the sexy nurse. Chesty. <laughs> yeah, not the sexy nurse. The old nurse <laughs> who obviously <laughs> looks like Robert England. And we start, I started screaming, so we left. And, but you know, I didn't realize I'm already at the end of the movie. I should have just stayed. Yeah, I was about to say you made it really far far into it yeah i have i have such a history of nightmare on elm street and uh other than scream uh, elm street would probably uh, be my third favorite series i mean I, there, uh, yeah I, i'm very passionate about elm street so 
I would be more. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'm more than happy to have Mike Flanagan at, at, with this. As far as Freddy Krueger goes, I mean, should they recast Robert England or maybe have him like as a Jaws type character where you barely see him? So have you seen England's pitch about where it's like three different versions of Freddy and then he's hmm. like the main Freddy? No, I didn't. Yeah, it was. So his pitch was something of how it would be different manifestations of Freddy because different people would interpret him different ways. And then he would be the ultimate one. That way he wouldn't do have to do quite as much in the makeup and in terms of stunt work. And as soon as he even said that, I was like, because this was right around uh, Halloween 2018 being released and like mm-hmm. the aftermath of that. Cause I think Heather Langenkamp too had said something of like, Hey, I want to do this for, for Nancy. <laughs> and so it, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I, I don't know. I would love to see that in terms of a new Kruger. I've never been able to come up with one that makes sense. What about you? It got recast once and in, while I thought he worked as a great man version of Freddy Krueger, I don't think he was a great, you know, Freddy Krueger. I think he was a great Rorschach in it, because I think that's all he's really playing is he's just doing his Rorschach again. <laughs> well, the the flashback scenes where you just see him as a man, I thought I thought he was great. But yeah. other than that, nah, man, <laughs> I could I could uh, just leave that movie, even though I, mean, I still got some opinions on it. If you're going to have Freddy in there, I, I like Robert England's pitch. That's pretty fun. But, you know, kind of keep him like in the shadows, like a mystery person, like he was in the first one, like a like a little like a little boogeyman. But I think, too, that they uh, if they do that England's pitch, then they can have the best of both worlds because they can have one iteration that's real goofy and one linery. And then you can have one iteration that is evil, just fucking evil. So, yeah, I, I I'm. Big thumbs up for Flanagan. I really hope that it happens. Like, I, I don't know. I really, really want that. But let's get into there was a trailer released this week and it was really the only trailer that was released this week. So we're going to watch it. It's for Tim Story's The Blackening. So let's do this. Really, bitch? A cabin in the woods? Now let's get it all in perspective for all y'all enjoyment. Of you still a slave to the white man? Y'all gonna start calling my wife the white man, all right? Newness is the anthem. Put so your hands up that you shoot with. That's what we do on June T. Hell no. Where are you going? You look for the fuse box. What kind of house is this? No, no thank you. The blackening? Whoa! Jim Crow Monopoly. <laughs> Shit probably runs on racism. Oh, so this is a hundred percent comedy. Save Morgan. What do you mean it, save it, Morgan? It very much is. <laughs> <laughs> where did we? Where did I see that? Like that constant air package I do. In your predicament, this is so a much like scare package too. To I will spare your lives if you sacrifice the person you deem the blackest. The blackest? Nobody should judge anybody in here, bro. You have two minutes to decide. Shanika, she say nigga the most. Nigga. <laughs> See? Wait. Y'all can't pick me. I'm gay. Oh, uh, Clifton. Yeah. That can prove I'm not the blackest. Prove it. I've never seen Friday. Oh. I voted for Trump. <gasps> what? What? Twice. You oh, are Big money, play boy, your time's up. We need a plan. Don't say it. Don't you dare. We- Don't say this, don't say it. We have to split up. Oh. Your time has run out. It's time to die. <laughs> Is this shot like a Tyler Perry horror movie? It kind of looks like it, but you know, better production. Would you sit down right now? I mean... That's exactly what she did. You could shut up. Made you look. Made you look. What black women gotta say to everyone on the damn time? Oh, I made you look. <laughs> uh. Yo, stop playing. I got a gun. Damn. Ew. That's too DMX. What are you doing? It's too DMX. Okay, then. <laughs> where did um, I see that? Where did we see that uh, that constant hand slapping that she did in the trailers? Was it Nope? 
Oh yeah, it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think it was nope. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, obviously scraping the bottle of the barrel in terms of uh, trailers release. It was it was either this or the haunted mansion teaser. Well, I mean, I I I did uh, for my job. I did upload the new haunted mansion trailer uh, right before I hopped on this video. Well, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that it's a one. I'm sh I mean, I love the Haunted Mansion ride at, at Disney. I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's uh, really works for the uh, the show. However, I'm not really show, sure the blackening works for the show either. So should be uh, interesting to see what what's what's your guys's reaction to that. Do you guys want to see the blackening? I mean, I think it'll have some funny moments. I mean, I like I like horror comedies. So yeah, as long as it's not like. Yeah, and, and Tim woke. Story. I think Tim Story is very talented. Uh, like I love Barbershop. Never saw is uh, seen Ride Along. Um, Barbershop is great, and what and uh, he did a few others that I actually really like too. Dude, he did the Fantastic Four movies. That's what I will always remember him for. Oh, he did do those. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, no, sc scratch. <laughs> as soon as you I were even saying that, I'm like, does he realize that this guy's done those fantastic? He, he did the Fantastic Four movies. I blocked those out my hit my mind already. Barbershop's Ooh. great, so I'm gonna say Barbershop's a good movie. <laughs> there we go. Well, he I can, mean, he can do comedy very well. Yeah, I mean, there we go. I mean, and that's what you need comedy director for it. So, yes. I mean, yeah, it's whatever. I don't if I see it, then it'll be completely forgotten by the next day, I'm sure. But yeah, harmless, harmless. I mean, I, I'm sure it's going to be a lot better than Boo, a Medea, Halloween. Yes, I almost guarantee that it will be better. <laughs> But I mean, that's we pretty much covered it all. We talked about Children of the Corn, talked about Flanagan's potential Elm Street and watched this trailer for the blackening. So let me know in the comments as to if you're going to even watch Children of the Corn, because please again, do. I, <laughs> yes, please do have some fun with it. Have low expectation because, again, I went into it with rock bottom expectations and enjoyed the shit out of it. So, like, if you do the same, I think you'll enjoy it. And next week, we have a real fun one because next week is the release of Scream 6. And we've got a very special guest. I'm not going to usually tell you the guest because, I don't know, it, things could happen. But I know for sure that he's guesting. Lance will be on to talk about Scream 6. So I have a feeling that uh, that'll be a fun episode. And that should be a fun one. If, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm unfortunately, I'm going to see the 3D fan event because I really wanted to see the movie as early as possible. And I know there's like some exclusive stuff at that screening. I want to mention something really quick. I mentioned to you uh, off camera how I've been watch, uh, showing my son all these Scream movies. Uh, yes. So he's now seen every single one of them and he is very much looking forward to going to the fan event. So I'm going to take him to go see it. And now that I know awesome. what it's rated for. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Very, so very I will cool. be there. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let me know in the comments as well if you guys are going to watch Scream 6. I mean, I'm so excited to be able to talk about that one. So definitely join. It's probably going to be a long one. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you in the next episode.